We're looking at have hope. That's the message, part three. Have what? Have hope, part three. That's the message, have hope. What is hope? Hope is strong conceived picture of the possibility of God's word becoming real consigning your colorful future. You are to arrive at. I think it gently. Hope is strong conceived picture of the possibility of God's word Becoming real, consigning your colorful future, you are to arrive at. You got it? Hope is simply seeing ahead of what God has said concerning you, and then you know that that which you have said must come to pass. So here. If you can't see a colorful tomorrow, where you are can easily confuse you. Those who see their tomorrow don't allow what is happening today to bother them. He says, surely there is an end and their expectation shall not be cut off. See, the expectation of the righteous shall be granted. May your expectations be granted. Expectation is simply hope. It's simply what? Hope. Do you know there are those who have, when you are hopeless, you become helpless. To have hope, I said, number one, know what God's word says about you. Know what God's word says if you want to have hope. To have hope, number two, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Because no man can have hope if he does not have a true picture of himself. Listen carefully, people of God. I'm not talking about popularity or accomplishment. No, no. Those are not the things that make you. Last week, a multi-billionaire in the United States committed suicide in Manhattan in his office. So money alone does not bring fulfillment. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm talking about having a proper self-worth and value in line with the word of God. How do you see yourself? We determine the hope you have. Let me say this to every one of us. Stop celebrating your defeats. It's time to celebrate miracles. Stop talking about what you have gone through or going through. Start talking about your expectations. Yeah, these people of God, life wasn't meant to be endurance of trials but of enjoyment and triumphs. And I see you triumph over that challenge in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 15 and verse 11, I want us to read this scripture together. One, two, go. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. My joy is on joy. So your joy should not be based on material things. Are you hearing me now? You are possessed. No, that shouldn't be the basic reason for your joy. Your joy should be based on what God says about you. Your joy should not be based on my, it should be based on what God says about you. Stop living in fear and defeat. Now let me say. Some that will humble, humble you and make you. Someone else should not determine when you should be joyful. Did you hear me? Someone else should not determine when you should be what? Joyful. 
Galatians 6 verse 4. Let's do it together. One, two, go. Let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. <laughs> Glory to God. Joy should not come from outside. It should come from within. Let nobody determine your joys are here. Let your joy not be only when they give you flower. That shouldn't be when you should be joyful. Your joy should not be only when they send you tests. Your joy should not be when you go to a party. Your joy should not be when they give you ice cream or you have money. Your joy should be based on what God has placed on your insides. Are here. You shouldn't be joyful only. Say, I'm joyful when they send me tests. No, that should not be the joy. Or oh, anytime they give me flower, I get so joyful. No, it shouldn't be that. Anytime we go to a party, I'm very joyful. That shouldn't be that. Anytime I have money, there's joy in me. No, your joy should flow from the word of God that the Holy Spirit has placed inside of you. Flower shouldn't make you get joyful. The day there's no flower, then you will die. In the Western world, if you don't give a woman flower on her birthday, she may hate you. She say, give me flower. Hey! That should determine your joy. He sent me tests today. Tests. Some of you, you only laugh when you have tests. Some of you, you laugh only when you had money. The day you're broke, everybody will know you're broke. You're every, everything will agitate you. No, that shouldn't be your joy. Don't, joy should not be determined by the money you have. So I hear. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Please, feel good about yourself. Feel what? So I feel good. About myself. Say it one more time. Feel good about yourself. Let me say this. What lies and bad news have you believed about yourself? What lies? Sit and look at you and say you are useless and you believed it. Some of you may look at the mirror and say, look at me. Am I really the way they said? Am I war? But what is African colloquial? Am I ugly? You are, for you to believe that you're ugly, then you have believed what the lies of the devil. You know what the Bible said concerning children of God, why you should be careful? He calls Satan, in Revelation 12, that he's the accuser of the brethren, so his work is to accuse you. <laughs> Did you hear me at all? Satan's main work is to do what? He said he's the accuser of the brethren. Look at it, Revelation 12, verse 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, his, his work is to accuse you. His work is to do what? Satan will often use memories of your past failures to distract your future goals. He will want to remind you of your past failures as to destroy your faith. He will look at you and say, look at you, useless, useless, you, you, very useless. As some of you will not sit down and start thinking, am I really useless? <laughs> Tell me if I'm useless. Already you have believed the lies of the devil. For asking the opinion of people, you have believed this lie. And it does that in your mind. It comes to you, useless. Go and look at the mirror, if anybody will marry you. See the way you were you sit down like this. Blood! I will wow. <laughs> he has told you a lie that you believed. He looked at you. He said, look at yourself. Look at your shoe. Look at from head to toe. Poor you. See, you shouldn't know if you change. You believe the lie. You believe what? That you have a shoe that has a hole does not mean you are poor. He was made poor that you might be rich. But because you don't know who you are, you say, look at me, and I see my shoe. Now, you just show somebody, you say, see my shoe, the one that don't hold it on that. My friend, I wore a shoe that was broken, my wedding shoe. My wedding shoe broke in this church. Will I be talking about shoes now? Huh? I've given out LV shoes 90-something one day. Not LV of Nigeria, LV produced in Europe. 94 pieces, 94, 96 pieces in one day. The same me. I didn't believe his lies. He told me, he, so he kept, I had a shoe, what is shoe? I went to a point, the shoe broke. So when, when the shoe is broken, if you move it, the front will go like this, back will go like this, front will go like this. <laughs> now, but he told me a lie. I said, shut up. I said, I don't believe your lies. I'm rich. 
I'm what? I didn't believe his lies. I didn't allow what he told me to affect me. I told him, I'm rich. Today, I give out suits as you give out sweet. I give out what? Suits as you give out sweet. Which lie of the devil did you believe? He told you a lie and you believed it. So I, he says he's the accuser of what? He's used, he, what he does to accuse you. And hear what God said in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Satan, I will not believe your lies. Say it one more time. Your lies can't move me. At all. He said, remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of what? Remember ye not the former things. They are past, my friend. Forget the mistakes you and I made in the past. Behold, I will do everything. Now it shall spring forth. And shall it not what? I hope you make a way in the wilderness and leave us in the world. He said, remember ye not the former things, the mistakes you have made in the past. Put them behind you and have hope of the future. So here, yes. you don't look forward looking backward. A driver that keeps looking backward will crash. If you want to go forward, then forget your past. Let go of the past if you don't want to pass to the past. Are you hearing me? God does not use your yesterday to determine your future. God will not consult your yesterday to determine your future. Your yesterday is gone. God has written it off. Don't allow yourself to put it on the paper when God has given it, written it off. Paul speaking in Galatians, Philippians 3.13. Hear what Paul said. Paul said, this one thing I do. Philippians 3.13. Forgetting the things that bread and I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this one thing, what? You will do, not God. Don't pray it. You will what? You will do it. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. This one thing I do, I have to put the past behind. I have to put it behind. You are a prostitute. Put it behind you. You are no longer a prostitute. If any man be in Christ, the prostitute is dead, not you. The accuser will tell you, you can't marry. You remember, you were a prostitute. See your customers, every one of them. Tell him the one who was a prostitute has died. I'm a new creature in Christ. So I hear. And don't allow anybody to remind you of your past. Whoever reminds you of your past is a demon. Tell the person you are not the same person. You need to come and say, Madam, are you not the one that was my customer? He said, I'm not the one. The one that was your customer is dead. This person is a new creature. All things are passed away. So I hear. Yes. Psalm 103, verse 12. Hear what the Bible says. God loves me. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. You read this scripture together. One to go. Can the east and west meet? So all the things that have gone, they are gone. They can't meet again. He said, the way east and west are fast, so everything that you have done, they are path. Stop sitting down and be mourning the things that God has forgiven you. I love this man a lot because he understood scriptures more than any of them. Paul. Paul killed people. Slaughtered people. He was a killer. He was a what? Paul was a killer. Remember who killed Stephen? He led the team that stoned Stephen to death. They said they dropped the clothes of Stephen at the soles of one young man called Saul. That means after killing Stephen, they removed Stephen's clothes and dropped at his feet. They said, bring his clothes. That was how wicked Paul was when he was Saul. Now, Paul became a preacher. Became a what? So when he was preaching, in most churches, the widows will be looking at him. He knows that they will be looking at him. There's no way Paul will not know. Paul knows that someone will say, hey, this, man, this guy will kill my husband. I did preach. So Paul, Paul understood that they will be looking at him with that kind of eyes. Then hear what Paul said. When he came to preach, <laughs> in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 2, he said, receive us. We have wronged no man. 
He said, receive me. I know some of you are looking at me as a killer. But let me tell you, I've wronged no man. I'm not the one that killed your husband. I've corrupt, corrupted no man and I've defrauded. Who was talking? Paul, the killer. He said, I did wrong you. In case you think I wrong you, the one who wronged you is not me. My friend, I have a self, sense of self-worth. You still like this. Said so I would remind you. 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 We do bad things. They say, God love you. Ta. Then you still, nobody talk to you. Only you say, not true. Not true. See how you hear. Say, bad me. My friend, don't allow the devil to remind you of your past. Say here. Paul said, I wrong no man. I defrauded no man. This man you're seeing is a new man. In fact, in case you are too worried, change your name so you won't be remembering the old name. <laughs> I don't say you change your name. I mean, in case you, the name is worrying yourself, change it. Some of you, the way you see, you just sit on your own and you begin to memorize bad, bad things. Some of you don't think of any good thing. You say, bad, 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 bad. So that will remind you. Say, you, you, you. Now you go, you want to be a millionaire? You, your grandfather poor. Your father poor. Okay, look at your dress. Then <laughs> you now get up. You now open your wardrobe. Through, through. No new clothes. All these clothes five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. Chai. Chai. God. So there's no poverty go kill us. <laughs> it's reminding you. He said, okay, look at your roof. Everywhere lick it, lick it, lick it. Lick it. Rain fall, water go fall. You put basin here. Put, put, put. Say, Chai. So poverty will kill us here. He said, eh, I don't tell you that you go die inside poverty. He said, not true, not true. And I get up, he said, come, come. This is the way they fall. Now he said, we go poor like this, we go die like this. He's just reminding you of your past. At that point, tell him, shut up. Satan, you're stupid. I am not the one who live in poverty. Jesus died. And he was made poor for me to be rich. So I know no matter this roof leaking, I'm going to give money to people and I'll buy houses for all people. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. That will stir up your hope. That's your what? To see a colorful future. He said in 1 Corinthians, so the 1 Peter 2 9, he said, You have chosen a royal and holy, a peculiar, that you show for the praise of God has called you out of what? Into a marvelous life. So you are called to be a marvel to your world. You are not a non entity, you are God's entity. He said, You are a chosen, you are a chosen by God, a royal and holy. God is fair to you as a nation, not an individual. You are not a local person, you are an international figure. To show for the praise of so why are you looking down? You see, like this, you put your hand on your jaw. How are you now? How about you for what? Satan is reminding you of something, you know. You quarrel everybody because Satan is reminding you. You. He talks to people, though. Even some of you, even in church, he's talking to you. This one pastor is preaching, it's not for people like you. You know, say, you, you, you know your background. As I'm talking, you go see like this. Say, this is pastor's talking, it's not for our type. He say, you, you know, you're a primary school teacher. Teacher, 16,000 16, per month. So we are, if they say they want to buy a car, is it you they are talking about? You buy a car. <laughs> you go buy a bicycle, forget car. He, be he talks to you, he says, bicycle. Even the bicycle itself is not the one. Someone like, you buy second hand, though, second hand. <laughs> you tell, second hand, somebody bicycle, the one they've read to go farm, tire, and I go buy you. There's a chair. Chair. Pastor. Pastor. This way they talk cannot be our type. Oh. Our type in a bicycle to go with a farm. Yeah, that they say, shut up, Satan. I can't use a bicycle. I'm going to ride an SUV. And what? Change your picture. The, the, the false of that. Change your what? Change that faulty picture. It's too faulty. It's too what? Change it. Change that picture. When he wants to remind you, shut up, you devil. Don't put bicycle in your parlor. So of you, even when you want to marry, you put, you put a pan wine with bicycle. Ta! Don't put that kind of thing in your parlor. Don't put bicycle. But drawings are very powerful. Don't put bicycle in your city room. Pictures has power. 
Listen, I went to a, an architect in this church. I told him, I said, sir, this drawing is not good. He said, no, I'm an architect. He's yelling me. Long ago, close to 20 years ago, I entered this parlor. I said, sir, how can you put drawing with somebody with torn clothes? The boy was, was by the rack, by uh, just been trying to pick his clothes with a torn. He says, a good, I said, sir, pictures have an effect on your mind. You wake up in the morning, you see a boy by dustbin. I said, sir, remove this picture. He said, no, no, no. Today, it's not out of poverty. Pictures have power. You now carry a bicycle, put for your parlor. Your parlor, put, they put aircraft, they put uh, you, you, your skin saver, and I'm walking, I'm walking. The one you used to say. <laughs> your skin saver, and I'm walking, walking. Very ugly monkey. You don't use a skin saver. Some of you even use frog. A skin saver. Frog. <laughs> use skin saver. Use better mother. If somebody picture you get this pleasure from, or use high skyscraper. You, you go put bungalow. <laughs> Pictures have what? Power. Pictures have what? Power. Pictures have power. You say, I will praise the Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So I must have self-value. Say it one more time. I will not reduce my value. I am a special product in the hands of God. I see myself the way God has made me. I see myself. Now look at me. I'm going to sit down. Sit down, sir. Come, my boy, come. Let me show you something. What is this? What is this? The new note? This is the new note of Nigeria, 1,000 naira. What have I done? Now, my squeezing it, does it lose its value? And I get very angry and I throw it down. Does it lose its value? If I decide to match it, does it lose its value? You have been squeezed. Battered in life does not mean your value has been reduced. You were battered by challenges. You were squeezed because of circumstances. Does not devalue you. Your value in the sight of God remains the same. You are going to... Now listen, when God picks you up, he just threatens you like this. And you still remain the same. Don't allow challenges make you change your language. You are not a devalued product. Your value remains the same in the sight of God. Rise to your faith. Osha, bring me a pocket. Say from today, Lord, I see myself the way you see me. Say it one more time. I must have a true picture of myself from scriptures. I cannot be devalued. I am who I am in Christ. Lord, anything contrary to your picture in my mind, I come against it by the blood of Jesus. I have a true value. Go ahead and begin to pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Picture, cast it out of your mind.
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Don't allow the devil remind you of your negative past. Don't. Don't. Anytime he wants to tell you, in case, okay, if Satan told you that you're a failure, tell him you have been a failure years before I was born. So I'm not a failure. You are the real failure. You, Satan will, you have to be very serious with the word of God. Otherwise, he will remind you. He say, okay, you. Look at your life. You will now begin to count your past. One, two, three. You fail here, you fail here, you fail here, you fail here. Then you, some of you don't know, but when I sit down, it's true. It's true. Shut up, you devil. I'm not a failure. All things are past. One thing. If Paul was reciting his mistakes, he wouldn't have preached. Some of you, even when you meet people, you keep reciting your past mistakes. He said, come, make I tell you. In case you don't know. Make I tell you. That's why my first car spoiled. After that car spoiled, my business broke down. After my business broke down, my marriage crashed. After my marriage crashed, my picking, and I saw school self, the boy no go. After that, he job be telling bad, 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 I have a future. I have a what? Because of my future, my hope is bright. You will make it. You will make it. If somebody wants to talk you down, tell him, I will make it. Today I may be tracking, but tomorrow I will use Rolls Royce. I will, you will not even use Rolls Royce, you will fly in the air. I'm speaking to you, young man, you will fly in the air. You will fly in the air. The people fly, they don't have two heads. They don't have what? Two heads. Two heads. They don't have two heads. You'll fly in the air. Yes. You know what I mean by flying in the air? You have your own jet. Yes. Fly in the air means you have your own jet. Before this time next year, somebody's story has changed. Yes. You may be seated. Glory to God. Yes. We'll take a few minutes for the communion. We'll take communion right now in John chapter 6 and verse 48. It said, I am the bread of life. So you are taking the bread of what? You are taking bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. They ate manna and they stayed for 40 years. Not one person died. In 40 years they were healthy. Everybody taking this flesh today all over the globe, weakness and sickness and death will be far from you. Yes. This is the prayer we come out from heaven that the man may eat it off. I'm not what? I've used this scripture for somebody who's at the, two persons who are at the point of death and they came out of death. One with a heart problem, one with poison. The two already do not die. Now, right in the name of Jesus, as I'm talking right now, everyone marked out for death, you'll be rescued in the name of Jesus. Yes. He said, who's so eating my flesh, taking my blood, my beautiful, have eternal life. You all know the story of COVID. You all know the story of Ebola. That that scripture was given by God to me and it broke those backbones of those funny sicknesses. Now, anyone taking the flesh and blood today and one terminal disease is ravaging you, including that cancer, immediately you'll be delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. If the six. He said, you know, I eat my blood, dwell, drink my blood, dwell in me and I him. So it establishes oneness with Christ. Oneness with what? Now listen, listen, listen. Those have been taking communion. It's understanding that makes it work. That's what I'm preaching. You may be taking communion, and if you don't have understanding, it will become consumium. So we're not talking religion here. Hey, I've been taking it, I've been taking it. No, no. You can't take communion and break down in health. Every health challenge today, sickness, tomorrow sickness, Today, as we take off it, that disease will live permanently. His flesh will take over our flesh. I decree high blood pressure to stop in the name of Jesus. His flesh becomes our flesh. His blood becomes what? Our blood. 
As you partake of his flesh, partake of his blood, whatever is not in him, that is in any of us, will be destroyed immediately. Amen. And whatever is in him, will be in us. In 2 Kings 4, 39-41, he gave it to them, and then immediately the poison in the pot was neutralized. Your, your stomach can be likened to a biological pot. Every poison in you, poison through food you ate, poison through some of you used to smoke before and then it became dangerous to your body when you became born again. All those poisons, the moment this communion enters you now, it will be neutralized in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mistakenly, you ate something you're not supposed to eat and then your body system disorganized. Right now, it will neutralize that poison in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Life story in this church, hey, the only son, the only child, not the only son, the only child of the parents, they took him to hospital, was sick. Doctors gave him overdose. Mistakenly, they gave him overdose. This boy began to gasp for breath. The tongue was protruding out. He was about dying. The mother, her eyes red, she picked him from the hospital, being the only child. Rushed him to the church. We're in the church. We prayed from afternoon till evening. No way. We are praying. Praying. We pray. The thing will subside. After a while, the tongue will be coming out. We say, What is this? We prayed. Bible school was on. Youth Bible school students, pastors, non-stop. Duma was made like a mad woman. The only child. At that point, I turned. I said, God, what do I do? He said, that boy was given over those. Give him communion. I said, bring the communion. We brought him on the altar, the old altar. The moment I dropped the communion in the mouth, me like this. That was the end. The poison was neutralized. The overdose, the over... Uh, I don't know. I won't tell you. Every drug given to you has side effect. They'll give people a drug for cancer, it moves their hair. They give people drugs, the drugs have side what? There are drugs that make so many potent. There's a man whose wife said the man became potent through BP drug. Through what? BP drug they were given to him made him to be potent. That he became weak and that was said he couldn't perform. A matured man. Listen, most drugs have their side effects. They will not tell you. The doctor will never tell you. But every drug has the cousin that follow them. All the things that have side effects that affected you as poison, as this they will be neutralized instantly. Yeah. Immediately, this communion enters you. I decree whatever anything you have taken that affected your body, neutralize in the name of Jesus. And he gave it to them, their eyes were open. May your understanding be open. Yeah. That's Luke 24, 31, 31. And then Moses and Aaron's rod swallowed the rods of magicians of Pharaoh. Is that true? And the rod is Jesus. Is who? You remember? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And he said that this, uh, uh, in, in John 3, 14 and 15. He said, as the son of man was living in the wilderness, so as the son of man was living in the wilderness, so as the son of man believed. So the rod which comes to serpent is Jesus himself. I'm talking about the scripture for scripture. So when you take of one flesh, it becomes the rod of Moses, just like the rod of Moses, and swallows all the magical rods of Pharaoh. So everything eat you up, cancer, all the diseases in your body, one, one flesh, one what? One flesh that enters you will swallow all up in the name of Jesus. All the magical serpents of cancer Name the disease. The communion today will swallow them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise to your feet. You are going to pray. Lord, as I partake of your flesh and blood, say with me, as I partake of your flesh and blood, there shall be immediate transplant of your own flesh in my flesh. Your blood in my blood. Let your flesh replace my, replace my own. Let your blood take over my own as I partake of your flesh and blood. Go ahead and pray. Stretch your hand and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus.
the name of Jesus. He said, I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of all thy wounds. By this flesh of Jesus and blood of Jesus, health is restored in the name of Jesus. Everybody be healed in the name of Jesus. Not one person amongst us will be feeble. Strength and vitality. Health and longevity Amen. shall become our portion. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. give him thanks.